But the medical aid issue is an important one with regard to compromising clinical standards because you've hit the nail on the head. I suspect there are number, many, many doctors who are being sued, not because they were to blame, but because they, they were hamstrung. They simply couldn't do what they needed to do for proper diagnosis. And if that ever happens to you, heaven forbid, please don't forget to tell your attorney that you, did, you, you couldn't do an MRI. You wanted to, but you couldn't. But then what you need to do, you need to protect yourself by writing to the patient, diplomatic, and say, look, I, I have suggested that the best diagnostic procedure is X, but unfortunately, Medicare doesn't cover this. If you're prepared to pay for it, I recommend that you have such procedure. So you've covered yourself that it was recommended. Do you want to continue with this question or then please carry on? If I can just ask you an example that I've had literally this week, a patient who I've been looking after for two years at least with bipolar disorder. When I applied for her chronic out of hospital benefits, they acknowledged that they would allow those benefits, but then with a proviso that she had to be with a preferred healthcare provider. Now, I'm not a preferred healthcare provider in this situation. Ethically, where does that leave me and the patient? Because she has a right to her choice, but she's not going to get treatment unless she goes elsewhere. I think that's an ideal case to refer to the National Consumer Commissioner. I think a letter should be written by the patient, uh, setting out that you've been the pre her, her, her physician for X years, or whatever, and that she elects you as choice, but the rules of the medical aid scheme uh, prevent that choice, and she believes it's unfair. I think it's unfair, and it might fall squarely within the provisions of the CPA.